All right, so it's still a daybreak right here on Trust TV. Well, our discussion is going political now. And um, the Obideti Media Office has said the Labour Party is preparing for an outright victory in the 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, in the 2023 general elections. Now, how prepared are the Labour Party to dethrone three major other major parties in the race for the 2023 presidential election. Now we have joining us in the studio, as earlier advertised, the spokesperson of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council, um, person who needs um, little or no introduction right here in the studio, and the person of Kenneth Okonkwo. Thank you and welcome to Daybreak. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, thank you viewers at home for joining in. Okay. All right, so we just saw the um, Labour Party presidential campaign rally in, uh, in Kaduna. Yeah. I, I'd like to assume you're coming from there. Oh, well, no. Okay. I, uh, I, I, you, you don't proceed mm. for every rally. You, know, you don't take all the spokespersons because of the fallback of what I'm doing this morning, for okay. instance, because some would remain to tell the story. So. The Kaduna Rally has further established us as the national party that has the national spread. Kaduna is the home of our vice presidential candidate, the Cerebral Dati. You know, when people make their media hype about us, you saw the structures. We are actually dominating the structures in every geopolitical zone. And our structure is the people of Nigeria, not the structure of criminality or structure of corruption or structure of unemployment, structure of pirates, pyramids of poverty, structure of illegality and impunity, structure of incompetence and bad leadership that PDP and APC have exemplified. You know, Nigeria is the best country that God has created on earth. And you can quote me on that. Mm -hmm. A country that has about 923 square kilometer of arable land. Not more than 2.5% has been cultivated. A country that has about 850 coastal line, capable of making us a maritime superpower. A country that has 200 million very brilliant people on earth. It has always been said that we have the largest concentration of intelligent men on earth. When we leave the shores of this country, we are the best in whatever we do outside Nigeria. Okay. What does that tell you? We have only one problem, leadership. Talking about leadership, um I like the fact that um, Ibrahim took off from Kaduna. Uh, same yesterday, we, we saw the presidential candidate of the NNPP. NN, NNPP. PP, sorry, I would, I'm quick to, to, to uh, replace that with the NNPC of old. <laughs> um, at the Chatham House, where your principal um, was uh, a day before. And, and somewhere in between his questions, um, he said he would have loved uh, the opportunity to have had uh, a marriage with, with, with the Labour Party. But the problem with the Labour Party is that it's a regional party with regional interest. How would you react? I'm sure you, <laughs> you listened to that postulation by Kwankoso at, at uh, the Chatham House. What, what would you say about that? Um, forgive me, because um, in international politics, if you watch it very well, whenever any party is scoring less than 3% in the opinion poll, mm. the party does not even have right of audience. Mm. In America, you wouldn't even be invited in presidential debate, mm. even within the primary. Uh, so um, with respect to the party, it belongs to the category of others. Mm. Uh, so I wouldn't begin to you know, spend much time. But when you talk about regional party, maybe you just defined the NMPP itself, mm. that has not been able to exceed the word of the presidential candidate. And you see how the people from even his own state are moving out in droves to other parties. 
So I think the only regional party here amongst the four is the NMPP. Mm. And that is why I would not want to discuss about them. Mm. Like I said, it is within the international practice that when you are below 3% in the opinion poll, you're hardly an issue. Okay. So it was really an honor and privilege that they extended to him. And I thought he would have used that opportunity very well. And then talking about a party that is now the phenomenon mm. in Nigeria, we have just had our Kaduna rally. Kaduna is in the Northwest. We have had rallies in the North Central. We've had rallies in the Southeast, South, South, Southwest. Where else? And then somebody is opening his mouth. That was why he lost the greatest opportunity of his political career of being the vice presidential candidate of the cerebral P2B. Okay. Um, listening to you uh, feels like, um, well, maybe because you have resonated so much in Nigeria as uh, a T-spirit, it feels like, <laughs> like a script. Um, and like we are going to have a smooth sail for the Labour Party. But I dare to say that there are issues, right? We know there are issues in Lagos, and you have a caretaker committee. There are issues in Ogun. The, the candidate in Nasara State seems to be having a running battle with the state chairman. And, and we, we know there are also issues in Adamawa. How much of this logjam, as it were, or crisis within the party in these areas I've mentioned, which are critical areas, by the way, including Kanu, how much of that is going to impede on your quest you know, to take over uh, the hems of affairs in Nigeria? None at the presidential level. Because whichever faction, whichever, you know, leaning of whatever part of crisis that is happening in the Labour Party, all of them are unanimous. That p 2 is the only option. And so also, the members of all other political parties, APC, PDP, they are all doing P2B at the presidential level. And I can tell you that because I was a member of PDP and APC before becoming a member of the Labour Party. And a lot of them confide in me that when it comes to the issue of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, they are going to do P2B. But what you have just enumerated may affect us on the sub-regional level normally. Just like any crisis within any political party will affect, you know, on the regional level. But can you compare this with a PDP that has unraveled five governors plus one are saying that they would not support the presidential candidacy of their party? And you know what? The party is so afraid that officially they say they won't even campaign in any of the states of those five governors. Have you ever seen that before? So PDP has already ended as a political party. It is already off the track. Because how can somebody who ran on only one agenda uniting Nigeria he could not unite his family, unite his party, unite his anything. Mm, the greatest disuniter on earth. Just because I don't before, want to talk about APC. Mm. They will tell you they are there to collect the money as much as they want and then vote their conscience at the presidential level. Mm. So these two parties have unraveled. Mm. PDP, they are the ones who said that... Uh, Bola Tinubu is a drug baron, mm. and they are threatening legal action. And you know what? I agree with them, because whatever PDP is saying about APC is true. APC is the one who said that Atiku Abubakar is now a special proposed vehicle for corruption. Mm. And I agree with them, because I heard the voice of Atiku Abubakar owning up to it, teaching the generation before him corruption, and teaching the generation after him corruption. So actually, Two of them should be listened to as to what they talk about each other. But what they talk about themselves should be discarded as infantile lies. 
Because when you see APC, you're talking about APC. There is no truth in it. I challenge any Nigerian to tell me one thing APC government has achieved vis-a-vis -vis the promise they made Nigerians. One. I'm not talking about two. Are you talking about the economy? Hmm. They promised they were going to take 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Now they've succeeded in taking 133.3 million Nigerians into poverty. That's why I say structure of poverty. Hmm. Are you talking about unemployment? Today, youths, 54% of our youths are unemployed by their own statistics. Then 33.3% of Nigerians are unemployed. Hmm. This is unemployment. What do you think is causing banditry? Terrorism. It is poverty and unemployment. Mm. You don't leave young youths that has energy and leave them with nothing. Mm. Okay. Talking about uh, our principle. It, yes. Uh, just so that we are able to get as much as possible within the time frame. One of the biggest prospects of um, your principle would be. Uh, his level of acceptability in the South, South, and in the Southeast. But uh, the bulk of the G5 governors are from there. Uh, yesterday we heard them say they will vote for the candidate with integrity, whatever that, whatever that means. They don't yeah. seem to have thrown their votes openly. And some, uh, there seem to be some level of, um, uh, would I say, fear or doubt with your principal going into alignment, uh, alliance with these governors. Why is you have governorship candidates at that level. Uh, how much of a distortion do you think all of this talk about alignment? So because we have seen him flown into rivers a couple of times. What, what kind of alignment is he possibly going to have in a state like rivers that would include your governorship candidate? Or is it just about him uh, and the others can find uh, their level? Democracy is a system of government that thrives on dialogue and compromise world over. My principal first item on the agenda is securing and uniting Nigeria. We may belong to different political parties, but we are all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You must carry everybody along. And it starts from how you conduct your politics, because you don't learn to be left-handed in your old age. My principal said he's going to dialogue with everybody. And when my principal comes into power, I will be the first to say, establish a government of national unity. Because we need to carry everybody along, leaving nobody behind. We are facing existential threat in this country now to our unity. So when you come to such precipice, you have to carry APC along, carry PDP along, carry Labour Party along, mm -hmm. and then carry others along. That is the way you will be able to implement certain policies that are going to be hard. Anybody that wants to make this Nigeria great again or solve our problems must be willing to take very tough decisions. You can only succeed when you have the support of everybody. My principal said he will talk to every agitator by whatever name you are called. It is only when dialogue fails and you know he will not fail because he's charismatic he's lovable he has character he has capacity he has competence he has determination he has dedication he has discipline when such a man is sitting in front of you when you look at his track record of ability and performance you have no choice than to listen to him mm -hmm. you know people in the regime of pdp apc they will go to see the president and will not even see him. This is the man that is going out to see the people. When the people are suffering from flood, he goes to meet them. When people are in IDP camps, he goes to meet them. So I'm surprised that it's only River State that you are able to note that he goes to see. He goes to see everybody. He has well, seen well, Gumi. Well, 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 other candidates are saying are, are doing the same thing. They are going mm. to visit IDPs. No, that's what I'm. No, well, well, I'm well. sorry. I've not uh, seen um, the APC presidential candidate visit any. If you have, please let me know. Let him even be able to visit himself. 
you know, before you talk about visiting others. Uh, uh, all right. Mm. So, so yeah, but you can contradict me if I'm telling a lie. So, so, so one thing I, I like to uh, would like to talk about right now is um, yes. you talked about dialogue earlier and, and carrying everybody along. Oh yes. One 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 major thing that a lot of people are actually looking at is a situation whereby, if the Labour Party becomes wins the presidency, there is a they they might face a situation whereby they will not be able, they might not have a majority when it comes to. The, the National Assembly, which might become a problem when it comes to policy implementation and, and, and putting it forward. How prepared are you for that kind of scenario? Let me first of all note, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking at you guys. Mm. I want you to know what I am. I want to talk before even saying it. Mm. Now, we are in a country where you have a ruling party controlling the executive branch mm. and the National Assembly having absolute majority. Mm. What have they done for us? PDP had monstrously, you know, majority members in the National Assembly controlling the executive branch. What, are, what did they do for Nigerians? Meaning that that is zero basis for performance in Nigeria. You know, they always say that when two elephants fight, the grass suffers. But people have not known that even when two elephants make love, the grass will still suffer. Mm. So you see, these two branches of government, they are no longer checking and balancing each other. They are now colluding to defraud and fleece Nigerians of their common patrimony. Mm. This is one of the best things that will happen to Nigeria, where you have a national assembly as an institution that can check and balance the executive. And you have an executive that will not be willing to use Nigerians' money to illicitly bribe its way in the national assembly. Now, having said that, Pito B, as a person, has experienced that before. Mm. As a governor of Anambra State, he had no member of the House of Assembly, not one. That he was able to transform a state from being the worst state to the best. Let me give you just a little example. Because of time. Before Pito B came into Anambra State, Anambra State was the state that they could kidnap a governor and put him somewhere and announce his resignation against his consent. So you can imagine. And the governor that was so kidnapped was denied police escorts. He had to resort to getting his own bodyguards until a higher court Success. said they should restore it. This is the kind of state he inherited. But do you know, before four years, the IG of police ranked him and ranked Anambra State as the most secured state. Hmm. UNDP ranked Anambra State as the best in MDG goals. The Poverty Alleviation Program, NAPEP, the DG, ranked Anambra State as the best state in terms of poverty rate. Okay. And that was because of the preponderance of private enterprise, mm. which His Excellency Pitobi engineered. Okay. He was the one who backed Innocent Motors, first and foremost. He was the one in his regime, they were exporting vegetables to Europe that gives Anambra State up to $5 million. Okay. Uh, before we run out of time, you know, there are, there are so some uh, So he has done it before, yeah. having no member of the member of House of Assembly, and yet came out the best. Mm. So, of course, he's going to win some seats in the National Assembly. Okay. But even if he doesn't, he will still transform Nigeria to the best. Okay. I have two questions quickly before Ibrahim uh, comes up with his intervention that I would like you to address. The first one is we have seen an increase in the attack on INEC facility in the southeast. Uh, yes. Police stations, INEC activities, and um, concerned Nigerians and analysts have said uh, this have uh, the tendency to discourage voters or even in collection very of well. PVC as we as we have seen. I would like your thought on that. And secondly, very quickly, um, the the vice presidential candidate on your party at, at several times alleged that he has come under very uh, serious attack, attack on character and on his family on account of uh, being on uh, this ticket, a matter of fact, he had to share tears on one of the TV programs. Can you give us uh, an insight into what this character, what type of character is this nation and the quarters you suspect uh, this may be coming from? First of all, it is sabotage. 
and the whole idea is to discourage the Southeast people from voting their conscience. That is voter suppression. Okay, but sabotage from which, 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 which? Well, voters? it is left for the Nigerian security agencies to figure that out. But I know of a presidential candidate, Ahmed Bolatinobu, that told his supporters openly that power is not served a la carte, that you must fight for it at all costs, grab it, snatch it, and run away with it. But he doesn't control the instruments of state. So how Oh, you haven't you seen the Jagaban army with uniform? Haven't you seen the Agberos and Togs? The Alayes? Haven't you seen? Oh, you don't know that Funcho Williams was assassinated when he was the chief executive of governor, uh, when he was the governor of Lagos State, and the governor is the chief security officer of his state. Now, he said this himself. He's my first suspect because he voiced it himself. The security agencies ought to have been investigating him by now. He ought to have been permanent by making that statement alone. Even if, as a leader, you are not there physically, that word, having gone mm. out, has sent a message to your followers mm. that they mm. must grab it, snatch it, fight for it at all costs, destroy it at all costs. But so, uh, yeah, you know, uh, so well, this is my first suspect. But our viewers will say... And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm urging the security agencies to move in and investigate this. Uh, but uh, you are a lawyer. Um, yes. Why would you rather blame a non-state actor yes. rather than uh, the, the security apparatus controlled by the commander-in-chief himself? Why would you rather Good. situate that with somebody else uh, simply because it's, it's a contest? The job of the security agencies is to enforce the law. They are not the ones I will blame or suspect for committing the offense. I mean, but they have a responsibility so I am to not secure blaming. the environment. I am suspecting. Mm. Okay. Good. So they have the duty. That's why I'm saying that the structure they have is that of impunity and incompetence. They are not doing it well. Mm. So if I'm going to blame them, it's incompetence and not doing their job. But mm. if I'm going to suspect, it is the man who said, grab it at all costs, okay. fight for it, okay. snatch it and run away with it. Okay. So APC candidate and the APC ruling party, the other one is incompetent, the other one is belligerent. So either way, APC is an anathema to the Nigerian society. Mm -hmm. Anybody who is contemplating voting APC, I have one prayer for you. Mm -hmm. Be like that candidate. Mm -hmm. You and your children will be like that candidate of APC that you want to foist on Nigeria. So I would like, I because like... election is about our future. Hmm. So yeah. It's about our children. Hmm. So you should be able to be like the candidate, and your children will be like the candidate you will vote for. Very quickly, I would like your thoughts on uh, the accusation of uh, Baba Ati. You know, let me make it clear that Dati Baba Ahmed is one of the strongest men I have met. He is a friend, and I am close enough to him to tell you that when he wept, he wept for Nigeria. He wept for the moral decadence of a nation where some people will not even honor the moral injunction against speaking against the dead. Whenever a man is dead, whether he lived a good or a bad life, you are enjoined not to speak evil about him. And you can imagine a man that died 35 years ago, and people are making him an issue. So he was weeping for that country that has so gone down under the leadership of APC and PDP, that people will sit down and begin to molest the integrity of the dead. It's a shame. That's one of those things they have to correct. Do you know in APC PDP government, if you ask a child, what would you want to be? He might want to say you want to be a 419 person. Mm. He might want to, you'll be shocked, he might want to say you want to be a bandit. Mm. Because they are now thinking that these are the legitimate ways of making money. All right. Well, um, that's... Uh, I don't understand. That's, honestly, that's... honestly... Nigerians should vote out these two political parties mm. and vote for a new Nigeria, All which right. is only possible with P2B and 
Dati Baba. Well, thank you very much for having a new Nigeria. That's a very, that's a perfect place to actually end this discussion as it is. Um, it's been uh, eye-opening, I should say, uh, this discussion uh, this morning. On the preparedness of the Labour Party for the 2023 general elections, we've had um, the spokesperson of the Labour Party presidential campaign council, um, Kenneth Okonko, right here at the studio. And um, of I'm course... I'm tempted to say Andy, if you're <laughs> <laughs> no, no, my heart has skipped. I thought merit has appeared again. You know? So I'm no longer living in bondage, you know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. and uh, we hope after um, everything, then uh, we will not be living in bondage. Thank uh, no, you no, 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 no. Thank no. you very much for coming on <laughs> the show you. Uh, this morning. All right, and that's our show for today on uh, Daybreak. Hope you had a wonderful time uh, watching us. And if you did, well, let's do this all again tomorrow. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. You can catch up on all of the aspects of this program if you had missed any on our social media handle on Instagram, on Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, do well to go there and pick up everything uh, that you need. I am Sunday Michael Ogu. Let's do this again.